Hello everybody, it's the weekend. I'm here with the industry legend that is John Ward. Hello, I'm JW, and here we are with Paul Meenan. So we're gonna do uh, a ramble, but we're gonna do slightly different because you're not a Tresham, no. I'm not a Tresham. We're not surrounded by Marcus and Matt and Joe. Hi guys. And um, we're gonna talk, we're gonna talk about the industry and, and Star Trek the way it should be spoken about, I think, to be honest with you. So, um, Tell us a little bit about how you got into the industry, probably worth... Mostly by accident, actually. It was just one of the things I was always interested in, and uh, eventually it all went from there. So my uh, first book I got on electrical stuff was... Uh, my parents bought it when I was age nine. I still got the book, and it was one of these sort of basic DIY-type books where you, it literally covers sort of how you put your socket in your house, that sort of thing. And it sort of really went from there, so that was sort of the first... Sort of real interest part of it, and uh, then here we are, a lot of decades later, and uh, we're uh, doing videos on YouTube somehow. So, I um listen. I'm the novice, so I'm learning from the master. This YouTube stuff for me is so strange. The, the weird thing for me is, is years and years and years ago when I was running jobs, uh, we had you know digital cameras were just coming out, and we had the ability to film. But in them days, you're only allowed to film 30 seconds of footage. I don't even remember them ones where you put the yeah. card in, 30 seconds and that was it. So me and the lads on site were actually making spoof movies and films and stuff. Some of the guys watching this may remember. Um, but we made movies that can never, ever go on YouTube, but just for laughs. And, and I've, I've still got copies of all that. So I, obviously I got to a point where I grew out of it and I thought, well, you know, I was young. I was just starting running jobs. You know, you move on in life. But now with YouTube, it's a great medium to transmit and share your thoughts, your views, your knowledge, your engineering judgment as we so do in, in lots of videos. And it's, it's really cool um, that on the E5 channel, we've had Gary and GSH Electrical doing stuff. You're gonna be putting a video on. We're gonna have some of the other guys. Dave Watts is working on some bits of us. It, it's becoming a really nice, we're a community, but it's becoming a YouTube community as well where we can help support each other's endeavors um, whilst being respectful and not being, um, well, the electrical industry can be a bit bitchy at times. Yeah. Um, and not doing time, that. In fact, yeah. Most of the time, in fact, yeah. Yeah, so lesson one, really, of E5 is, is we, we're, not, we're not very bitchy. Um, we're actually just good pals trying to have a laugh and share knowledge. And, and uh, it's, it's very strange for me because a lot of the guys that I watch, like John and Gary, they're your peers. And it's, it's strange becoming friends with them and getting to know them more. And it's, it's a good feeling. It's a good feeling because the best friends are the ones that, uh, the best friendships are the ones that begin, begin with respect. Yeah. And, and I think that's one thing that a lot of friendships in society nowadays probably miss. Maybe, yeah. but... Yeah, I think that certainly it's not a case of, in certainly electronics and all others, it's not a case of, oh, you're doing something here and then all these other people are your enemies or something, because clearly it's not how yeah. it is. I mean, we're all doing the same stuff and we can all learn from each other. It, it's weird as well, because when I first started out as an electrician, it was one of the things I found with knowledge was money. And people used to hoard the knowledge. So I would, if I would be on a job and someone would go, well, you can't do that. And I'd go, well, why not? And they'd go, Phew the regulations or the standards and being young and novice I go well where share, share with me tell me but they were too interested in about the extra hour at the end of the day and then you wonder why the jobs weren't going very well or there wasn't a buzz or an energy on some jobs and, and I always swore when I grew up I'd stop so any knowledge I'd have I'd share so recently we've just been to Vienna and I'm here now at, uh, in John's home and we have been looking at the Eaton rig before they grab it back out of my um, hands and, and, and going through the stuff that we learn together. Yeah, and I say it's always a learning thing, even if you've been doing it for decades, there's always new stuff. And certainly now, I mean, there's all this like, AFDDs and all this electronic stuff going in your house. It's uh, massive amounts of stuff. I, th I think the industry is going to be, for the next probably 10 years, discussing the word competence, the new C word of the industry, competence, and how you define it. And I think one of the key things is the ability to say, I don't know. And when I went, when I watched John's videos, I was, as everybody is, blown away by them. But then when you go to Vienna and you speak to these geniuses who invented the technology and have all of the minutiae equipment that myself and John could never afford because we're not multi-millionaires. Um, but when you, you have your hearts and minds changed and filled with very objective evidence, 
you then realise, my goodness, you know, I think I know an industry, and then along comes another game changer. Um, however, we're still not finished with AFDD because the only thing that's convinced yeah. us is Eaton's AFDD. Yeah, and of course there's all the other manufacturers whose devices may be similar or they could be completely different. So Absolutely. It's and, a mystery at the moment. So. And the literature needs to be written in a simpler, more a clear way because what we're seeing with AFDD is some is just terrible, some is written too technical, there needs to be a happy medium because the use and the selection of AFDD is very much a shift in uh, the selection process, the mindset of electricians, which yeah. is quite important. It's a completely different thing altogether. And unfortunately, leaflets with sly faces in don't exactly convey much information no. or about any at all. So this is ramble, so we can edit out whatever we want. So feel free to swear, because Gary isn't around, although we don't really swear that much, do we? Not as a trade. Not no, I haven't really a trade. Not. Former tradesman swears, hmm, he says with his nose growing. Yes. Um, so... I'm going to ask you, uh, I've got a few questions for you because m people have probably switched off already. Um, what do you think about the current state of the electrical industry? And, and, and because that's quite a broad question, maybe we should break it down into what are your thoughts and views on maybe uh, what the CPSs are doing, what the state of competence is, you know, or the, oh, we could go on for ages, but what, just give us your thoughts and views. Well, I think... I mean, it comes back to this sort of, this thing that came along with Part P, didn't it, when that was introduced, and then it came along with these courses where you could go on this sort of five-day course, or supposedly someone could go on this five-day course, and then learn everything, and then a week later, off they go, and they're fully this, and they've got all these bits of paper, and they can do everything, but of course, in reality, that's complete fiction, because you can't go from knowing nothing to knowing at least even some reason about stuff in five days or whatever. Um, I don't know what the point of Part P was originally, but it certainly hasn't supplied really anything that was improvements at all. Yeah, Part and P. Now, yeah, and so we've got now courses which, there's even worse now, there's actually a course out there for like two or three days, which is supposed to cover one specific thing, but I think in reality it's just sort of piling junk on top of other junk, isn't it? Well, the, the Part P stuff came, uh, there's a very tragic case of a lady called Emma Shaw who, who yeah. passed away, um, and she was electrocuted, and I think the, the judge, uh, the the output was unlawful killing. Yeah. Was it the dishwasher one, was it? Uh, no, no, this was, yeah. no, no, what it was was there was a, uh, it was a flat she was in, and somebody had put a screw through the wall when it was being built, and the screw had pierced the live cable, which had livened up the stud framework, and there was a leak. Um, that leak, obviously, the water had gone to where the metal was, and the water was obviously live. She went to turn off the water pipe, and she got killed. And um, she had a 23-month-old baby in the other room. So it was an absolute tragedy. And it's the first ever time I've seen a verdict of unlawful killing. So that's something quite important because recently I've just been doing some stuff for the IT and we've actually been talking about the Emma Shaw case and a lot of guys saying Part P, Part P, Part B. But from my own perspective, I think it's gone beyond longer than Part P because electricians are always at the end of multi-million pound investments or in a domestic world as cheap as possible. Yeah, I mean, I think you put a picture of a newspaper up the other day, and it was like four hundred pound. Yeah, rewire three bedroom house for three ninety five, and that was in uh, nineteen ninety two, which even then seemed incredibly cheap. Really, I mean, four hundred quid for a three bedroom house rewire, and so yeah. that was. You wouldn't get the materials for four hundred quid nowadays, to be honest. Sure you right. close. So uh, it's amazing how times have changed, but. For me, I think a lot of a lot of the more older boys. I'm not that old, by the way. Forgive the grey, but a lot of the older boys have always said um, it's been for me. The electrical industry has been on a downhill slope for probably twenty to thirty years. Part P, when it first came out, did have a a clause in it that required individual competence or individual registration. It disappeared super super quick. Yeah. Um, but I don't think Part P has helped. In fact, to be honest with you, most people now just go, what actually does Part P do other than the official notifications? Now, a lot of Part P, the uh, upset and aggression towards it because guys should be able to, or guys who think they're competent, go, well, I should be able to rewire my own home. We've only got to look on social media to see how much bad stuff there is. So a lot of that gets transmitted over to the CPSs who are effectively administering on behalf of the Ministry of Housing and Communities, um, the, the building regulations, declarations that's all they're doing but i think maybe a lot of cps's could probably do more to actually say look can we improve part p can we change it can can it evolve into something better what that is i don't know um obviously grenfell 
Yeah. That's got a lot of debate going as to what defines competence and what the CPS yeah. should be doing. And that's not just electrical, that's the whole building and construction thing as a whole, isn't it? And, and this is the trouble because a lot of people, I see a lot of electricians who will really offer quite a venomous rant about the industry. And they're right because they're on the tools. I've, I've been very fortunate. I've worked through the construction industry, through the electrical contractor, into the management company, the civil engineering, and now client. And you can see where it goes wrong. And yes, competence is a massive factor. Procurement is a massive factor. But the guys on the shop floor don't know what procurement is. You know, they don't know it in that minutia of detail. And and I think that the subdividing and breaking up of trades and layering and splitting of projects is very difficult. I mean, I, I was speaking to someone the other day where they were they were being asked to do a piece of electrical work, and then they said everything else is outside of our remit. And I sat there, I was sitting there going, well, hang on a minute, how can it be outside of your remit? You, you can't do your bit without the bit yeah. to connect into. It's all so, connected together in all kinds of ways, so you can't just ignore other people's stuff because it's inevitably going to be part uh, of the one, This is one thing I've seen. I mean, I did a job at Shepherd's Bush where we had the above ground of Shepherd's Bush, this on London Underground, um, was one contract with Westfield. Below the surface was a contract direct with London Underground. I was the electrical manager for the package. So I had a cable that went from A to B. My cable didn't say, oh, hang on a minute, after 75 metres, I'm on contract B. It didn't care. But you had to then administer that and make sure two separate designs were joined up. What a nightmare. What a nightmare. But we did it. We did it because the approach of the lads was, we're going to get the job done. We'll get it done right. We'll make sure it's coordinated. And the finance guys can worry about it later and all the administrators. Yeah. But, um, and certainly, I mean, if say the domestic side of stuff, this as cheap as possible is just so prevalent and you're going to yeah, quote for something and it's like you know for a fact there's going to be 10 other people who are going to do it for half the price or something and unfortunately if the sort of household or a person audience doesn't actually understand what the point of it is they're quite often going to go for that cheap price and and, and this is the, this is one of the things that breaks my heart because you've got a lot of guys out there who um who don't want to cut corners or, or just refuse to and would rather not work but there's so many guys in the industry who don't know that they don't know what they're doing is wrong. And one of the things I've recently done at a lecture where I said to a group of lads, I said one of the most breached regulations in electrical is 13216, which is no alterations and additions unless you ascertain and verify the earthing and bonding and the rating condition equipment is suitable. So I always say to guys, well, if you're adding a socket into Mrs. Jones's house and you're not checking the earthing and bonding, then are you actually considering yourself an electrician? because that's fundamental principles. You don't have to know the whole wiring rigs. A lot of people assume you have to know the wiring rigs, and you don't. There are six pages in it, it'd be really good to be familiar of it. Fundamental principles. Now you should be taught that as part of apprenticeship, but we're now in a society where we haven't got the real type of apprenticeships, we've got short courses. So you've got a whole guy, lots and lots of different guys, and their starting blocks are all different. Yeah, and obviously the end results are very different as well. So. And that affects the end product, and the safety of it, and the compliance which then turns into rows and bitching and fighting and arguing, because the industry does do that at times, um, but it's the safety and quality. And then what happens? We then have to mitigate that with RCDs mandatory or IFDDs mandatory. Yeah. And then people moan about it. Well, maybe we should look at supporting more the education sector. I mean, I've recently done um, my, my last ramble was with the education guys in Warrington and Vale Royal. Wonderful lads, but they were installing, I, I naturally assumed they were going to be installing really expensive modern equipment and they weren't. And yet I, I, I went back to work and I was telling the guys who were my electrical contractors rewiring my station at the moment and they were going, oh yeah, well the guys in college three years should be installing modern electrical equipment. Yeah. I was going, well they're not. No, they're not. Their they're budgets stuff, are yeah. finite and the manufacturers are not looking after them. And you just think, I don't mind paying more, but put the money where it's going to make the difference and it's in education. Yeah. And if you're going to teach people from the start on stuff that's 10, 20, 30 years out of date, then what are you going to get at the end of it? Someone hasn't got a clue with anything that's slightly newer than that. So and this, this is one of the reasons I like the, the, the electrical YouTube community because there are loads and loads of electrical guys all doing their own good thing and, and they're educating, they're inspiring, they're influencing other guys because some guys who work by themselves, they'll work and they'll feel quite, you know, cut away from the industry but one of the guys used the term e5 family and i really like that because everybody's contributing their knowledge in different ways it would be nice if the industry did that but the industry probably only has finite resources and staff and may not see the value in it because i i as a, I as a i mean, i'll be brutally honest 
I as a client see the electrical industry sitting here and the bodies outside of it looking in and going, oh, that might be a good campaign, that might be a good thing, but actually, are we actually doing enough to help the day-to-day -day from, and let's be perfectly frank, root cause, the learners, the colleges. So I think we should probably be doing more for the yeah, learners. definitely. I'd say if you're starting off wrong in the first place, it's going to be wrong from that point onwards, and then you've got all the problems at the end. But if you start off with the proper stuff at the beginning, then uh, it's a much easier task all over. So. so you do you still get your hands dirty on the tools now and again? Yeah, I do still do some. I've cut back a fair bit more recently. But you're not registered with a CPS at the moment? Not anymore. So here's an awkward... I was, it? but uh, I'm not anymore, maybe because I don't do that kind of work anymore. So let's, let's ask John a really awkward question. So if you were to register with a voluntary uh, regulatory body, which of the bodies would you register with? Would it be... ECA, NIC, Alexa, uh, NAPIT or Stroma? Probably NAPIT now. Okay. I was, was with Alexa previously. The only reason I chose that at the time, which was 10 years ago, well, more than 10 years ago now, actually, uh, the only reason I chose at the time was because it sounded remotely electrical. So I thought, well, if customers are going to say, who are you with? Well, well, it's with these people. And they said, oh, well, it looks sort of electrical related. But uh, see, that was pretty much the only reason at the time. See, I was actually registered with the NIC. So I used to I used to have my NIC t-shirt. I used to have, oh, sorry, my, my NIC t-shirt. I had it on my hard hat. I was a qualified supervisor for EDF Energy. We were rewiring lots of stations. But I, I didn't actually know about Alexa until about four or five years ago, and I know some really good guys who registered with Alexa, um, but they're part of the search short parent body, so it's NIC and Alexa. Yeah, it's all part of the same lot. But I say now, I'd say, having got a lot more information, obviously sort of 12 years later, um, probably with NAPIT, because... Uh... Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm at work, I'm registered with NAPIT as a corporate member, and um, they're really helpful for me, because, again, I'm only finite resource, but the resources they give to my colleagues it really helps take the weight off my shoulders, which is why I'm a corporate member of an APIT. But anyway, let's stop talking about work. Let's ask, let's ask the most difficult and challenging question since last week, one that will shake the electrical industry yeah. to its very, very foundations. So, oh no, hang on a minute, we can't, because you're, you've already answered this one, haven't you? Because Gary, uh, Star, I was going to say Star Wars or Star Trek, Gary got there first. Yeah, he went in and uh, already did that. And so. you're a Star Trek fan, so um, we should have a face-off now. So, you... In your ramble with Gary, you said Star Trek Next Generation. Absolutely. Um, did you did you mention you had a cat or something? Yeah, I do have a cat called Data. That's awesome. Okay. It's good, isn't it? So I'm a Deep Space Nine fan. Mm. So I think we should have a punch up live on camera, but it's just to see who wins. No, we shouldn't have a punch up. With. No, we won't do that. We won't do it. Disappointing you there. Um, <laughs> why Next Gen over DS Nine? Because I'll be honest with you, I have an affinity. I love Star Trek. And I know Gary hates me for saying that again and again and again, because I do love Star Wars as well, but Star Trek is more content. Um, I love Next Gen, but there are some episodes of Next Gen that are just like, Egh. and I love DS9, it's so engaging, it's such a community. Why Next Gen over DS9? Probably because I saw it first, and it was one that I saw at the time. That's a bit of a poor uh, answer. Uh, no, no, it. listen, I'll be honest with you, uh, again, in, in, in the spirit of honesty, when I first watched the very first episode of DS9, I thought, oh my God, what is this? By season two and three, they were like almost part of my extended family. I was so engrossed with what they did. I, I loved it over Next Gen because they used to run in parallel, didn't they? At one point, yeah, I think they overlap. started in an overlap, which was really, really cool um, because you got enough Star Trek. Now Picard, they've just announced a new series. So obviously you're going to be watching Picard. Definitely. I mean, there are bad episodes of Next Generation. There's no, oh, there's no denying that. And you can... They were spanking it's, it a bit, weren't they? Yeah, I mean, it depends. I mean, because over, over the period they made it, there was a lot of problems with the writers and they had a lot of changes and it was a it was a bit of a shambles at certain times, to be honest. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I think overall it's probably the better one. Yeah, so what John Ward is saying is, is if you're going to watch Star Trek, watch Deep Space Nine. If you like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no. Next Gen or DS9 is fine. Yeah. So we're agreed... To disagree, but yes, they're both just as good as each other. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing wrong with either. They're, they are different in a lot of ways. But I think that's why I like DS9 because it was different. It opened up that the Gamma Quadrant yeah. and all the differences. And yeah, there's a lot more sort of variation in it. It was like it was like EastEnders, but on a space station. Maybe yeah. that's why I liked it because yeah. I used to watch EastEnders years ago. Obviously, it was a much bigger sort of whole community thing going on there. So 
Yeah, no, and I think, yeah, the community is definitely a big thing for well, me. Well, it's I think. the next generation, obviously, you've got the, there is a community there, but it's constantly, it's much, much smaller because it's basically just the main crew, and then it's obviously each episode you get the other people in and so on. But for the, certainly the community thing, there's a lot more of it there. So, so there are a lot of guys who are going to be in a coma at this point or have definitely switched off. Um, but I don't really, so, uh, yeah, they will have. Um, what do you think, and this is a real open question, where do you think the electrical industry is going to be in 20, 30 years? Because before you're... So me and you will be retired, because I'll be... 20, 20 odd years, I'm going to be done, but I want to leave my knowledge for the industry to use. You have got a phenomenal repository of knowledge in your videos. Um, where do you think the industry will be, though? Well, hopefully not in the place it is today, because uh, mm. it's got to be... I mean, hopefully it'll be a lot better than it is today. But I yeah. think we're going to see massive change but we're already seeing massive changes anyway from all this new technologies going in i mean it's not just a case of putting a light bulb in your room and putting a switch on the wall and this whole thing about installing stuff and saying then leaving it for 10 years and maybe looking at it later that's that's going to go it's got to go yeah i mean i i can see installations are almost going to be throwaway we're gonna we're gonna have to start looking at upgrading spds because they'll yeah. last a finite time afdds um rcds you know the life cycle of them we're gonna have to be looking at more which is quite important. So yeah, in the future, the future electrical industry, I think we're going to have more throwaway installations. Yeah, definitely. So surge protection. Nobody can give us a finite life on SPDs because we don't know what levels of transients that we can encounter in the installations. Um, RCDs. Well, we'll do a video on RCDs, but they would appear to have a life expectancy. Well, they're an electronic component. So, yeah. AFDDs. So we 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 we're kind of experimenting a little bit. So I'm, I'm very cautious, as we all are, should be with new technologies. But I can see the electrical industry. Well, my view is very simple. I don't like the word change, and I, and I, I and again, this is the corporate me now. Change is an aggressive word. I, I'm a big fan of continuous improvement, which is the whole E five thing. Um, I think in twenty years' time, the industry will be in a better place. Will it tick all the boxes for everybody? No, probably not. However, so. however, this is the mindset I have. When I first got into the trade, I met a very old spark who just sat there and went, oh, this is all crap, it's all rubbish, it's all shit, you know, this is all rubbish, blah, 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 blah. I'm retiring in a few months' time. Good luck to you, young lad. And I just sat there and I thought, well, just go then, you miserable yeah, just, bugger. Just leave immediately. And, 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 and then I thought to myself, when I went home, I thought, do you know what? Um, I, I told my dad, and my dad said, well, you better, you know, when you're doing it, just make sure you don't do crap. And, and that's my mantra. My mantra is, is, for me, until I retire, keep doing little improvements where I can, individually, groups, with, with regulatory bodies, if, if they'll allow us, um, so that when I walk away from the industry, um, I can say, when somebody says to me, what did you do? I did everything I can with everything I have. What's your excuse? Yeah, I think that's a good idea. And certainly, there's always going to be new stuff, and just because it's new doesn't mean it's a load of old rubbish. Um, absolutely certainly well we've had our eyes opened on AFDD because yeah, just absolutely. be perfectly frank we were the two biggest cynics on AFDD ever and um, flying to Vienna and just seeing what I saw as I'm man enough to say yeah okay I was wrong yeah and also now we've seen how they're actually supposed to work and how they do actually work in the correct situations they're designed for then yeah yep but um, uh, say as for the uh, just shove them everywhere and hope is obviously not the proper answer. You've got to use them in the correct places and in the correct circumstances. And that's it. And that's going to be the key thing for Sparks is the correct section erection of this additional art protection. So that's going to be something that I will eventually, when I get home and get some time, we'll finish some videos on. John's very kindly done a video, so there'll be some stuff there. Um, but you'll see more and more come from not just me and John, Dave, Sparky Ninja will be doing stuff. Um, there'll be more rambles, more elect stuff. Um, and eventually I'll get shifted on to doing some client stuff as well, which I've got a few, um, I've got a few rambles lined up at work on stations, which should be good fun. Um, but yeah, no, thank you very much anyway, John. It's been an absolutely mind blowing day. So I'll do a little video diary of John and yeah. how he works his magic stuff, so. behind the scenes with JW. Um, I'm Paul, I'm PM just doesn't work. I, I, you know, I can tell you, hello, I'm PM. It just doesn't work. So, um, but anyway, I think we should end this. Yeah, I think so that's rambled for long enough, hasn't we it? We have yeah. totally rambled. So actually, some people are actually watching now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go to sleep. Um, 
Should we just nick Gary's line? Because it kind of works. Yeah, might as well. Okay, Gary, we're just nicking your line now because it just works rather than saying bye. So, we hope this video has been some help. help.